Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the Mini Witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Social media and photography go hand in hand, and whether you're trying to gain followers on Instagram with a miniature focused feed, or you're just posting your photos on Facebook trying to get some feedback on your latest miniature work. Photography is an essential part of your miniature painting journey, and today we're going to talk about taking and editing photos on your phone. You may not know this about me, but I'm actually a professional photographer and occasional photography professor. Even so, I don't always feel like pulling out my big DSLR camera for every photo. Whether I'm doing a work in progress photo, behind the scenes, or even just a final photo, I don't always want to pull out my bigger camera, which is totally fine because I can take great photos with my phone and you can too. So this is a beginner video. This is for people who know basically nothing about photographing miniatures. Next week, I will be uploading a more advanced video, which will include a intermediary lighting setup, as well as some really cool tricks to take your miniature photography to the next level. When it's up, it will be available right here. First, let's talk about the most important element of photography, and that is lighting. Lighting can make or break your photo. You can take an amazing photo of a dumpster if the lighting is right. In that same vein, if your lighting is terrible, unflattering, too harsh, it doesn't matter if you have the most beautiful model in the world, you're still not going to be able to take a very good photo. The two most important elements about lighting are intensity and color. I'm gonna try to keep this pretty simple. All light has color. Tungsten lights are orange, fluorescent lights tend to be green. What you are looking for is a neutral color. The easiest place to get a neutral color light is natural light. So the easiest thing you're gonna be able to do is set yourself up next to a window. This brings us to our next point, which is light intensity. You want to wait until you have a rather cloudy overcast day. This overcast is going to diffuse the sunlight. Harsh light gives very intense and dramatic shadows, whereas a soft diffuse light is going to give very diffuse light and shadow. Whether you're using clouds to diffuse the sun, sheer curtains, or taping wax paper up, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you diffuse the light to get that soft, even light that you're going to want to make your miniatures look the best that they can be. A few other things important to know about using window light for your miniature. Make sure that you have your miniature either facing or parallel to your window. You don't want to photograph the miniature with its back to the window because you're only going to end up getting like a silhouette with some very lovely, but not what you want, light wrapping around it. So make sure you're photographing your model with it facing the window light. Don't use a flash. Flash causes incredibly harsh light, which, as we talked about before, is not what you want when photographing miniatures. To make your miniatures appear even cleaner for their final photos, I suggest photographing them on a sweep. And a sweep is just a fancy term for an extra long sheet of paper that is both vertical and sweeps down to be horizontal as well. And basically what that means is since there isn't a seam from where the background and then the floor coverage meet, it's going to keep the background even simpler, keeping the focus on your miniature. Lastly, if you want to get a little bit fancier, but by no means is this required, you can create a simple reflector out of tin foil or any sort of reflective white object, like a binder, for example. You want to make sure that it's white because then you are reflecting that white light. If you use, for example, a green binder, you're going to reflect green. So make sure you're using either white or tin foil, but it's going to bounce the light off of the reflector and back onto the miniature, filling in some of those other shadows that you might have from just using a single light source. Next, let's go over what app I use. Of course, you can use the default camera app, but it doesn't give you as much control as other apps available. 
I personally use the Lightroom app, which is free on both Apple and Android devices. Let's go over the specifics as to why I prefer this app. First, it lets me control the white balance. So like I was saying before, all light has color and this color affects your miniatures. White balance is an internal camera setting designed to balance out these colors of your light to photograph a more realistic representation of your miniature. The second reason I like this app is because I can shoot in DNG, which stands for digital negative. Basically, a digital negative captures more information than what a normal JPEG photo can capture. It collects more information in your highlights and shadows. So later on, if you need to adjust the highlights or shadows, your shadows are too dark and you need to bring lightness to them, your highlights are too bright and you try to bring them down, DNG has actually captured that information to give you something to salvage. Also, in my opinion, the Lightroom app just gives better, more crisp photos. Personally, I feel like it blurs out the background more than the traditional camera app. And I just overall feel like it's a closer experience to photographing my miniatures with a real camera. So let's open the app and look at it. The first thing you should know about this app is that this app doesn't only take pictures. You can also edit and catalog your photos as well. I, however, have another app that I prefer to edit with. So we're just going to look at this one for its photography capabilities. So when you open the app, you're going to start by clicking the blue circle with the camera down in the lower right. Next, you can choose either professional or HDR down at the bottom. So the difference between professional and HDR is pretty drastic. With professional, you can choose your exposure, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance. With HDR, which stands for high dynamic range, what's gonna happen is that it's going to take three photos automatically at three different exposures and stitch them all together to try to get the most realistic photo that includes as much data as possible for the shadows and the highlights. This can be a really great option and I highly recommend playing with it, but I'm going to work in professional just for this video because I think that it's what you're going to be using most frequently. No matter which setting you choose, make sure that you go to the top and double check that your file format is in DNG. Again, we want to be in DNG, not in JPEG. While you're in the upper menu, make sure that your flash is turned off. That is the little lightning bolt in the upper left hand corner. Going down to the bottom menu, again, we have exposure, SEC, seconds or shutter speed, ISO and white balance. The only ones that you need to worry about are going to be your exposure and your white balance. There is also another icon called auto. Don't worry about it. Just leave it how it is. So your exposure can be changed in two ways, either by sliding to the left and right on the screen or by clicking the EXP in the lower left hand corner. And that's going to decide how bright your photo is. Personally, I always prefer that if I have to choose, I would rather underexpose a photo because it's easier to salvage the details from the shadows if it's underexposed than it is to bring back those details from the highlights if it's overexposed. But swipe around and get to the point where you think the photo is going to look the best. Also, this utilizes tap focus just like any other camera. Make sure that you are focusing on the most important part of the model. For example, don't accidentally focus on their tail in the background. Make sure you're focusing on their face or their sword or wherever you deem to be most important. The other thing that we want to focus on is white balance, which is the WB and the little cloud. Your white balance should automatically be set to auto white balance, which usually does just fine, but sometimes even the app messes up. Your other options are tungsten, fluorescent, daylight, and cloudy. There's also an eyedropper, but don't worry about it. So just select whatever white balance you think makes your photo look the best. Once you have all of your camera settings decided, just hit that center button to take a photo or your volume keys. 
One thing to note though is that this is incredibly finicky, I suppose is the right word. So make sure that you're holding the camera very steady. If that means balancing it on a table or holding it with two hands or maybe getting one of those little tripods, just know that it is more difficult to take a stable photo using this app. So take in mind that you need to be extra sure that you're holding your camera steady. To look at the photo that you just took, select the icon in the lower left-hand corner. Once you're done taking photos, you're gonna hit the X in the upper left, and that's gonna take you back to this default screen. All of your photos are going to be stored in LR Camera Photos, and here is the library of the photos you've most recently taken. To export, you can either export one photo at a time, or if you click and hold, you can select multiple photos to export. Either way, you're going to click that upwards arrow at the upper right-hand corner. Next, it depends on what you're going to do with this photo. I personally would want to edit it in my favorite editing app, which is Photoshop Express, but you can also just save it to your camera roll at this point if you have a different preference for photo editing. So I, however, want to open it in my next app, so I'm going to click Open In and scroll down to the bottom and click PS Express. Photoshop Express is basically an advanced Instagram. You can add text, you can add filters, you can make collages, and you can also do general editing like changing the exposure, upping the shadows, and pulling in those highlights as well as changing color temperature. So if it's basically an advanced Instagram editor, why do I bother using it? Well, there are two main reasons. First, it has the ability to utilize that extra information that we got when we were photographing in the DNG file format. Instagram and a lot of other photo editing apps can't read a DNG file. If you try to import it, it's just going to compress it all to a JPEG and you're going to lose all of that valuable information. So in order to utilize all of that extra data that you've collected, you wanna make sure that you're going to be using an app that can actually read them. Second, it allows you to edit the full entire image, the subject, and the background separately. And it does a pretty good job at automatically selecting the subject for you. What this means is that you can darken the background, lighten the background, blur the background, increase the contrast in your miniature, increase the vibrancy in your miniature, or increase the exposure on your miniature and decrease the exposure on the background, all in the same photo. And it's a really great way to add those final tweaks to your image. The main area that I added my photos in is in the slider section, which is the section in the lower right hand corner. And here you can see what I was talking about with those three different selections. You can see them in the right hand side. You can see full subject and background. And that's where you can see that Photoshop Express did its best to select the subject from your photo. And you can tell what area it has selected by what area is highlighted in red. If for some reason it didn't do a particularly great job in selecting your subject or background, you can use the brush down in the bottom toolbar and paint in the areas that it missed. One thing is that you don't wanna edit the photo too much. If you really up the vibrancy or contrast and to the point that it doesn't look like the same model, not only are you lying to your viewers, but you're also really only cheating yourself. So while Photoshop Express can do a lot of really great things, make sure that your photo is still accurate to the miniature you're photographing. Make sure that when you're adjusting the subject and background, you don't go too overboard. The more you alter the subject or background, the more obvious it's going to be that it was Photoshopped. So keep an eye on the edges in between your subject and background to make sure that it doesn't begin to look like you cut it out of a different photo and pasted it on top of this one. And after that, I go ahead and export it using that upwards pointing arrow at the top of the screen and then saving that to my camera roll. I hope that you found this information useful and helpful. I can't wait to see your miniatures now that you're going to be able to photograph them in a better and more 
accurate way. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and subscribe to my channel. I just hit over a thousand subscribers and it's really cool. I, I remember being excited about 400 of subscribers. So 1000 is quite the milestone. Your last minute tip of the day is to change your water when you're using metallic paints versus using regular paints. The metallic paints can end up saturating the water. So when you switch from using metallic paints back to regular paints, if you're still cleaning your paintbrush with that same water, you can get metallic pigments, those glitters, actually can get sucked into the brush and end up on your regular paint. So be careful and change out your water in between paint consistencies.